Hello there, in this quick tutorial I want to show you how you can flash the original Xiaomi MIUI ROM onto the Xiaomi Redmi 5 without um, unlocking your bootloader first, uh, which isn't possible if you got a shop ROM on your phone, which of course is unofficial. So you simply visit en.miui.com, then you will see this website and here go to downloads in the upper menu and then you will get a nice selection of different Xiaomi phones and here you pick the Redmi 5 Plus, then you click on flashing guide, and then you go to fast boot update, and there you click this MIUI ROM flashing tool link under step one, which is the MIUI uh, flash tool or Xiaomi flash tool. You need to flash the firmware, and then you scroll down until you see a Redmi 5 entry, so there we go, three different entries, Redmi 5 latest global stable, Redmi 5 latest China stable and Redmi 5 latest China developer version. We are going to for the Redmi 5 latest China stable version, which for the Chinese versions of this phone is the right one. So simply click on it and the download will start. So the next thing you need to do is to prepare your computer for the flashing process. And the first thing you're gonna do is to install the Xiaomi Flash tool. It's just a normal Windows setup file, so I won't show you how to do that because it's just self-explanatory. And after that, you will get the Mi Flash tool icon on your desktop and you can run it and it will look like this. So fairly simple tool. You can keep that open. And then you also have downloaded the fastboot ROM file, which is a .tar file. You need to extract that using 7-zip, then you will get another archive, which you also extract using 7-zip, just right click on it. Of course, you need to install 7-zip on your computer first, if you haven't done so already. And then you should get um, this um, folder here, which um, contains some Windows batch files, as well as a images folder. Don't touch anything of that, those are the files you need. Um, once you did that, go back to your Mi Flash tool, click on select and then navigate to the folder you extracted the ROM files in. Choose the rosy images folder you extracted, not the images folder inside this one, just the parent directory there. Click on OK and then it should recognize all the batch files you have seen previously here. And you simply select clean all there with the flash all.bat file. And well, that's already it. Next thing is being done on the phone itself. So now please don't be shocked. We need to tear this thing apart, <laughs> but it's very easy. Don't worry about that. First, um, make sure that you remove your SIM tray because this will be in the way if you keep it in. So just open it and eject. And next, put your fingernails in between the white plastic frame um, of the screen and your back, back side of the phone. And then with one finger start pulling on the back of the phone. And then it should lose a bit, as you can see. I've already had loosened it. Once this happened, you put your fingernails inside of there and swipe it to the left or right side, it really doesn't matter. And as you can see, it pops open more. Now you do the same on the other side, and the same thing happens as you can see. Now let's get back to the left side and pull once more here. As you can see, it pops open more and more. And once you reached a certain point, it will be very easy to just remove the back cover, but please be very careful because the fingerprint scanner is still being attached. <laughs> well, what happened there shouldn't happen to you because there is a certain danger of killing your fingerprint scanner because as you can see this flex cable isn't the most sturdy solution there. But I've had luck, no damage there, it just popped out of its port there. So yeah, please be careful.
Um, if you rip that thing apart, you can't use your fingerprint scanner anymore, which would be a real pity. So yeah, now the phone is open and that's basically all we need. We don't need to tear it down further. So we need to get into EDL mode to bypass the bootloader lock. And to get there, we need to shortcut um, or short circuit two test points on the main board. And those are the test points, I mean. Those two little dots here on the left side of the motherboard, right next to this shielding. So how do we short circuit them? Well, I'm using a tweezer for that because it's just a very convenient way of doing that. So to make this a little easier for me, I'm going to place the USB cable on the USB port. I'm not going to plug it in now, just place it there so I can easily pull it in with one hand. And next, I'm going to short out those two test points using my tweezer. So I place every um, tip of it onto one of those test points to create a short circuit. Not very easy because those dots are very tiny, but it's definitely possible. So now I've shorted them out and now I'm going to plug in the USB cable. And uh, this first try didn't work out, as you can see, because the phone turned on and now it's charging and this is what shouldn't happen. So I pull out the cable again and try it once more. All right, and now I had luck and it did work. As you can see, we've got a COM port there and it's called Qualcomm HS USB QD Loader 9008 COM 10. Of course, the COM number can vary depending on your machine. So this means we are in EDL mode now. The short circuiting did work. And now we can flash it without a unlocked bootloader. So we've already selected the firmware previously, so we need to click refresh now. And as you can see, our smartphone now appears here in the list with the COM10 port. And now all we need to do is to press flash and then it will start flashing, as you can see. So there we go. Now it's flashing the original Xiaomi firmware, the Chinese version from where we can unlock the bootloader and then flash the official global ROM. So yeah, this will now take a while. And once this is finished, you can attach the plug of your fingerprint scanner again, put on the cover again, and then you press all three buttons of your phone for like 10 seconds and then your phone will boot. If it boots into fast boot mode, you again need to press the power button for a couple of seconds and then it will finally boot. The first booting process will take a couple of minutes, but then you will be just fine running the stock firmware. So yeah, I hope this was understandable for you. So as you can see, it wasn't that hard, just a little fumbly. So yeah, I think this will be helpful for a lot of you guys. So thanks for watching this tutorial video and see you soon with more content. Bye bye.